Hi, my name is Amelia Epp and I am an art teacher with Artists for Kids in the North Vancouver School District. And if you go to school in North Vancouver, maybe I've met you before in your school, or if you've come to visit the Gordon Smith Art Gallery, or if you've come to Artists for Kids for an after school art class. And today I get to meet you in my very own studio at home. So welcome, it's very nice to have you here. This is one of my most favorite places in the world. And so today I'm gonna to share with you an artwork that is by an artist whose name was Kanoyawak Ashavak. And this artwork is called Song of Spring. And I wanted to share this artwork with you today because it's spring right now and I've been noticing some signs of spring outside around my house and so some of the things I've been seeing are daffodils, I've been seeing little leaves growing on the trees, also some cherry blossoms on the trees around my neighborhood. Have you been seeing any signs of springs where you live? So this particular artwork shows some animals in the Arctic, which is where Kanoyuak Ashavak lived for most of her life. So she was an indigenous or Inuit artist from the northern part of Canada, uh, a territory that we call Nunavut. And uh, that's also a part of the world called the Arctic, so the very most northern part of our planet. And so that's a part of the world where it's very cold for a lot of the year, and the ground is covered with snow and ice. And so Kanoyuak Ashavak spent a lot of her life living out in the land with her family, moving from camp to camp, and even living in an igloo um, for part of the year. And so she would have been very, very familiar with the different types of animals and plants that you would have seen in that area at different times of the year. And so she often showed these animals from the Arctic in her artworks. And um, Kanoyuak Ashavak did eventually travel the world. She became one of the uh, one of Canada's most well-known artists. She traveled the world representing Inuit art. And she even visited North Vancouver and some very lucky North Vancouver students were able to work with her at that time. And they loved working with her. She was a really fantastic teacher. So if you take a look at this artwork called Song of Spring, look closely and see what are the kinds of animals that Kanoe Wakashivak has included. First, look inside the circle that's in the middle of the artwork. What animals do you see there? Maybe we spot some bears, maybe they're polar bears, uh, maybe some Arctic foxes, some Arctic wolves, some birds, maybe there's snow geese. Now look outside the circle and what are the two big animals that we see there? Well, these would be fish and maybe salmon. So another question for you, why do you think Kanoyuak organized her artwork in this way? Why are there some animals in the circle and why are there some outside? Well, one idea could be that the animals on the inside are what we call predators. They're the animals that hunt other animals for food and that the salmon, the fish on the outside would be their prey, their source of food. So today I'm going to show you um, an activity for creating a drawing that is inspired by Kanoyuak Ashavak's print. And so you'll be showing your own predators and prey from the Arctic in your drawing. So quickly I'm going to show you the materials that you will need to do this drawing. Firstly you'll need some paper. I've got my big piece of paper up on the board here. Mine is about 11 inches by 14 inches. Pretty big but you could use a bigger piece or a smaller piece whatever you have at home. And I have a little scrap piece of paper here as well. And if you want you could do your drawing with pencil and eraser to begin with and then trace over your lines with marker. I'm just going to start by drawing with marker right away. And I'm also going to need a circular object to trace. So I'll show you more about that in a moment. And then if you have it we're going to add color to our drawings afterwards thinking about warm and cool colors so you could do that with paints you could do that with crayons you could use pencil crayons or markers whatever you have around the house so the first thing we're going to do is look at the eyes that Kanoyuak Ashavak uses for the animals in her artwork 
And so I've already drawn a few up on the board here. These are the kinds of eyes that I notice Kanoyawak Ashivak uses. So we see uh, kind of a circle shape and also a semicircle shape and sort of a crescent moon shape. So we're going to borrow from Kanoyawak's style and use those same eyes in our art today. So before we put our eyes on the paper, we're going to do a circle, make a circle in the middle of our paper. So if you can find a circular object that takes up about this amount of space on your paper. That would be great. I'm going to hold mine down with one hand, trace around it with the other hand, and there we have our circle. Then we're going to draw two big salmon on the outside. So the way that we're going to start doing that is by first drawing their eyes. And I'm going to pick from my eye collection, my eyeball collection over there, and first draw one of these round eyes up in the top corner and another in the bottom. And then to start my salmon, I'm going to draw its mouth first, like that, kind of a U shape coming away from the eye. And then the head is going to kind of curve around like that. And like that. And then I'm going to add a tail shape like that. Maybe some details inside the tail, and maybe some gills, another fin, a fin on top of the salmon's back. You could add your own details based on what you know about salmon and how they look. Um, I'm going to make a line like that down the middle of the salmon's body, some dots for scales, and some details on the salmon's mouth. There's one salmon. It's stretching right around the side of the circle. Not a teensy tiny little salmon, a nice big one. Now I'll do another one. You could flip your paper over if you want. I can't do that. I've got mine taped up on the board here. So curving around. And we'll add that tail shape. Some details again. Some gills, another fin, this line down the middle, some scales again, and a fin on the top, and the salmon's mouth. There we are, two nice big salmon. Now we're going to move on to the predators on the inside of the circle. So here I will draw four eyes to begin with, and then we will create our creatures around those eyes. So I'm using some of the different styles of eyes from the eyeball collection again. Like that, four eyes. So maybe the first animal that I'll draw is one of those fierce um, arctic wolves. So I'll start with the mouth, bring the nose up like that, give it a nice big wolf ear. Here's the mouth and the head coming to the side there. I'll add a nose and some sharp teeth. And for the next one, I'll draw maybe an arctic, or sorry, a snow goose with its long beak. Its head comes around, connects into the side of the circle. Maybe this one up here will be a polar bear, starting with the mouth again, kind of that U shape. The nose comes up. Here's its eye, its mouth. Maybe I'll give this one some front paws, sort of leaping through the air. And my last one will be another snow goose. So I'll start with that mouth, the head coming around, the neck connecting in. I've got a lot of white space. Maybe I'll think about using some of the same types of lines that Kanoiwak Ashivak use. We could call them flowing lines or fluid lines to fill some of those inside spaces. Maybe those are like the wings of the snow geese. Kanoiwak Ashivak also connects together some of her animals so that they sort of join and flow together. You could experiment with that as well. So there I have my drawing with my predators in the middle and my prey on the outside. So next I'm going to think about adding color. I can think about warm and cool colors. My warm colors being on this side of my 
circle here, so oranges, reds, and yellows, my cool being on the other side, uh, greens and blues, maybe some purples, and I did an example earlier where I thought about using the warm colors in some areas and the cool colors in other areas. So I did my creatures on the inside with warm colors and then the space around them cool so that the warm would really pop out. And then on the outside I did my fish cool and the space around them warm. So you could use paint to do that, you could use crayons, pencil crayons, markers, whatever you have at home. So to me, Kanoyawak Ashevak's artwork is really about balance. I think that she creates a feeling of balance in her artwork by how she places the animals in it. But it, I think it's also about balance in terms of the balance in an ecosystem or an environment. So imagine that there weren't enough salmon for the predators on the inside of the circle. They would be left without a source of food. Their environment would be out of balance. So something I've been thinking about is balance in my own home. I know sometimes spending a lot of time in my house, it feels like me and my family members are kind of like predators and prey snapping at each other. So I think about ways that I can maintain balance within uh, my own self and within my own family. So some things I do to maintain balance for myself is to spend a bit of quiet time in the evening doing something I like, like reading or knitting or helping to main ba maintain balance in my family. I like to do things like maybe just thanking someone in my family for something they did today or helping them out with something without them having to ask me, maybe setting the table for dinner. Those are things I find can be helpful. So once you have finished your artwork, we would love to see what you have created and there's some different ways that you could share it. So you could, with the help, help of an adult, uh, take a picture of your artwork and share it on Instagram with the hashtag artist, artist for kids from home. Or you could display it in your own house. Maybe you could post it in your window so people walking by could see it. Or you could make your own art gallery in a hallway within your home. That would be fantastic. So thank you very much for joining me. Again, this was a lesson that was originally designed and taught by an art teacher named Corey Bogan. And please check back again. Artists for Kids will be posting more videos with art activities in the coming weeks. So come and visit us again. Mm -hmm.